Hi, welcome to Chemical Formulas Part 5. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to be talking about how to name binary molecular compounds. Specifically in this video, we're going to look at a little review of covalent bonding, what is a molecule again, what are binary molecular compounds, how to name binary molecular compounds, binary molecular prefixes in table P, examples, examples, and even more examples, and finally some practice at the end. So first, a little review of covalent bonding. Now remember, with covalent bonding, we see the co, which is together, and valent, which means valence electrons, and we're bonding them. So covalent is really involved with nonmetals sharing valence electrons. So let's look at the molecule water, H2O, where there's two hydrogens to every one oxygen. And we have our representation of our oxygen down here with our six valence electrons. And remember, what we're trying to achieve here is a full octet. So what oxygen really needs is eight valence electrons. And for my hydrogens over here, each of these need two electrons total to get their so-called full octet, because remember, they're in period one, and they can have a maximum of two electrons in their outer valence shell. So I can look at this oxygen right here, have it come over, and it forms a covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen right here. So now the oxygen has seven valence electrons, the hydrogen has its two, they basically achieve both of their octets. Then we have another hydrogen come in, it has its two valence electrons now as it shares with oxygen, and now this oxygen has its full octet. So what generally happens during covalent bonding? Electrons are shared between nonmetal atoms. And finally, stability is achieved through completed octets. A compound is considered more stable if it has its full octet. Let's look at the definition of a molecule again. So a molecule is defined as two or more atoms of the same or different nonmetal elements covalently bonded together. Because remember, when we see the word molecule, we think nonmetals, and when we think nonmetals, we think covalent bonding and sharing of valence electrons. So what's an example of a molecule? A molecule could be something like nitrogen, where we have a nitrogen atom, which has five valence electrons, and then another nitrogen atom, one, two, three, four, five, and it is sharing three pairs of electrons for a total of six electrons between the two nitrogens. So that is a definition of a molecule right there, two nonmetals covalently bonded together. We can also talk about the noble gases as being referred to as monatomic molecules, where we see that mana meaning one. And some examples of our noble gases are things like helium or argon or xenon. What is a binary molecular compound? So remember, bi means two, molecular means molecule, and molecule means nonmetal, and nonmetal means covalently bonded. So it's two nonmetal elements coming together to form a compound. If we look at our definition here, a compound of two different nonmetals covalently bonded together. So let's look at some examples here. We have NO2, N2O4, PH3, and CO. So all of these would be considered binary molecular compounds. How to name binary molecular compounds. These are the rules that you want to follow when you start naming these types of compounds. The less electronegative element will be written first. The more electronegative element is going to be written last. The suffix IDE is added to the name of the more electronegative element, so your second element, just like we would do with ionic bonding. Prefixes are added to indicate the number of nonmetal atoms present. Now this is something that's a little different, so I'll show you some examples of this. And the prefix mono is often omitted for the first element, but never omitted for the second. And I'll show you specific examples of that. So let's talk about the binary molecular prefixes that you're going to use to name these compounds and the use of table P to help you a little bit. So for numbers one through four, these you have to memorize. These are not on your reference tables, but many of them you're already familiar with. So if you have a compound that has only one atom of a certain element, we're going to use the prefix mono. For two, we're going to use di, three is tri, and four is tetra. Once you get to five, you can use table P to guide you, and so you don't have to memorize these, because we can use from five and up, 
basically from 5 and 10, to name both binary molecular compounds, and when we get to organic, we're going to use those also. So 5 is pent, 6 is hex, 7 is hept, 8 is oct, 9 is non, and 10 is dec. So let's look at some examples of how to name binary molecular compounds. So the first one here you're probably already familiar with, but let's just take it slow. So the first thing that we want to realize is that there's only one carbon here out of CO2. So just like with ionic compounds, that first element, you're not going to modify the name, especially if there's only one of that particular element present. So we'd start out by saying, okay, this is carbon, so there's only one of them there, so we're just going to write carbon. Then there's two oxygens, so I'm going to use the prefix di. And then oxygen, just like we would with ionic compounds, that is the more electronegative element, so I'm going to change the ending to IDE, so this would be oxide. Let's look at our next one. Phosphorus for P. There's only one here, so we're just going to write phosphorus. Now there's three fluorine atoms, so I'm going to use the prefix tri, and then fluorine would be changed over to fluoride. The next one is a little bit more complicated because now we have a subscript along with that first element. So we're still going to call it nitrogen. We're not going to change it at all, but before the nitrogen, we're going to indicate that there's two of them here. So we're going to put di. So the two here is corresponding to that di. Then we're going to write nitrogen, no changing the element. Four is tetra. And then I didn't put the A on the end of there because we're just going to write oxide after it. And it sounds much better as tetroxide instead of tetraoxide. Either could be written, you'd get your point across, but sometimes these names get blurred together a little bit. So N2O4 would be known as dinitrogen tetroxide. Let's look at our next example. One nitrogen and one oxygen. So with the nitrogen, we're just going to write down the name, nitrogen. Now, I can't just put oxide. If there's only one oxygen here, I have to write mono first. And I'm keeping the O off here because, again, it's going to sound better to say monoxide instead of monooxide. So remember, the key point with this particular example is there's only one oxygen, so I have to include the mono part there first. Then finally, SCL2, the first element is sulfur. There's two chlorines here, so di, and then finally chloride. So now what I want you to do is stop, see if you can name these, and then we'll see how you do. Welcome back. Let's look at this first one here. We have one nitrogen, three iodine. So I'm going to write nitrogen. The three can be represented by tri, and then iodine would be represented as iodide. The next one, one sulfur, so sulfur, six fluorines, so that's hex, and then finally fluorine we'd be changing to fluoride at the end, so this is sulfur, hexa, fluoride. The next one is carbon, then the four is represented by tetra, and the bromine we're going to change to bromide. So this is carbon, tetra, bromide. The next one, phosphorus again. Now we have five, which is pent, and then the Cl, which is chlorine, so we're going to change that to chloride. So phosphorus, pentachloride. And the last one, two nitrogens, one oxygen. So this would be di-nitrogen, one oxygen here, so monoxide, because the oxygen would be changed to oxide. So dinitrogen monoxide. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We went over a little bit about covalent bonding. We went over the definition of a molecule again. We talked about what are binary molecular compounds. We talked about how to name binary molecular compounds. Binary molecular prefixes and how to use table P to help you. We looked at some examples, and then finally we did a little practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.